This lecture is devoted to the introduction of graph neural networks. We we'll begin with some reminders about empirical risk minimization and introduce the problem of learning with graph signals. Graph neural networks are the tool we use for machine learning on graphs. And if you don't mind my reminding, in this course, machine learning is a synonym for empirical risk minimization. In empirical risk minimization, we are given three elements. The first element is a training set T containing observation pairs of the form X, Y, where X is an input or feature and Y is an output associated with X, which today and in the next few lectures we are assuming are both of the same length, N, the number of nodes in the graph. The second element is a loss function L of y, comma, y hat that evaluates the similarity between output y and an estimate y hat of such output. The third element, which is arguably the most important, is a function class C. A machine learning problem entails finding a function phi star in the class function C that minimizes the loss between the observed output y and the output phi of x predicted by function phi averaged over the elements of the training set. When we say machine learning, we refer to this empirical risk optimization problem and the process of finding the function phi star in the class C is the process of training. Once we find phi star of x, we can use it to estimate outputs y hat when inputs x are observed but outputs y are unknown. The goal of ML is for, is for these live operation estimates to be good. Producing good estimates in the training set is useful only insofar as it is conducive to producing good estimates during live operations. In empirical risk minimization problems, which we rewrite here for reference, the training set and the loss function are given once the problem is given, which leaves the function class as the degree of freedom that is available to the system's designer. Thus, the problem of designing a machine learning method can be equated to the problem of finding the right function class C. And, since we are interested in graph signals, like the ones we show below, graph convolutional filters are a good starting point to search for an appropriate class. Let us then describe a learning system with a convolutional graph filter. The input signal X are graph signals that are all of them supported on the same common graph with shift operator S. The same is true of output signals Y. They are also graph signals supported on the same graph S, which is also the same graph that supports the input signals. Given that inputs and outputs are graph signals supported on S, we choose as function class the set of filters of length capital K that are supported on the graph S. The function class phi produces outputs, phi of x, by multiplying x with a polynomial on the shift operator modulated by coefficients hk. The polynomial is of order k minus 1, and the total number of coefficients is capital K. This is a function class that is parameterized by both the shift operator s and the filter coefficients h. The shift operator represents given prior information, and the filter coefficients h are the parameter we want to learn. To fix ideas, we describe this parametrization with a block diagram, which we show here. In this block diagram, the input is the graph signal x, which we feed into a graph convolutional filter of length k, that produces the output z equals phi of x. 
the output is parameterized by the shift operator S and the filter coefficients H. With this choice of parametrization, learning reduces to finding the optimal set of filter coefficients H star that minimize the loss averaged over the training set. We emphasize that even though the function class is parameterized by both the shift operator S and the filter coefficients H, the optimization is only over the set of coefficients H with the shift operator given. The filter H is learnable, the shift operator is prior information we leverage. When the outputs we are trying to predict are not graph signals, we add a readout layer to match dimensions. Namely, introduce a matrix A with n columns and m rows and use a parametrization in which we multiply the output of a graph filter, which is a graph signal with n components, by the matrix A. Thus, we begin with the graph signal X, which we process with a graph filter to produce the signal Z, which is also supported on S. We multiply this signal with A to produce output predictions as the product of A with the output of the graph filter. While it is possible to make the readout layer a trainable parameter, this is in general inadvisable. It is more advisable to simply choose a suitable readout matrix and train the graph filter only. Thus, the ERM problem is not much different from the one before. It is in fact the same, but with a change in the loss function. Instead of comparing observed outputs, y, to the output of a graph filter, we compare them to a readout of the output of the graph filter. The motivation for simply choosing A is that we want to retain the advantages of using a parametrization that leverages the graph, and we can get away with using simple readouts because most situations with dimensions mismatch require simple readouts. For instance, if we want to read out the signal value at node i, we choose the i-th vector of the canonical basis. This is useful, for example, in recommendation systems or in any problem in which we are interested in values of individual nodes. If we want to classify a signal, a convenient way to do that is to read an average. We can read this out with the all one vector. 